Good morning, everyone. Thank you for, um, for having me here. I'm excited um, to be in Seattle. It's um, one of my, my favorite places to come and hang out, so thanks for, for having me. Um, so it's an exciting time for, for being in, not only in Seattle and at Mesoscom, but just in our industry and what's happening for development and for application um, accelerating, kind of bringing your services to the market quicker. And so there's a lot of problems and opportunities that, that I want to kind of lay out real quickly. So, so one of them is that the rapid change of pace in the industry is, is incredible right now. So at Cisco, we call this kind of digital disruption or software-defined disruption. And it's really you know, kind of looking at like the Ubers and the Amazons and the uh, Netflixes have just really disrupted the, the industry. And, and every company is pretty much having to become a software company. The, um, this might not be working, there we go, okay. So no single service is really optimal for all of the different solutions that a developer or an enterprise is trying to deliver their solution. And what is really needed in this environment is the ability to kind of create multiple services and can run in a single cluster, but can also scale out to run in multiple clusters across multiple sites and multiple regions, both internal to your data center and external in different cloud environments. And the goal of what, you know, what I'm working on and what I want to talk about today is sort of what, how do we maximize the utilization to deliver the optimal solution to the business. And so just a couple quick slides on kind of the, the problem space that we're in. There's a lot of different types of services that you need when you're developing. There's, you know, you have to think about how you're going to integrate your entire development cycle together. You have to figure out which service architectures you're going to use to create and, and build your service. And there's just a lot of different um, examples here. And this isn't even a complete set. This is a very small subset of, of the options and choices you have. Um, so one of the things that, that I've been working on is creating this easy framework, leveraging you know, a great partner like Mesos uh, for to kind of create um, a true hybrid cloud environment. So you can connect to any cloud, um, any service that you're running, any service you want to create. Um, it's, it can deploy in many different environments, so we've disconnected the deployment cycle from the build cycle, um, and then you can run it from a single interface in that environment. We've also been working with um, kind of can, the microservices architecture to sort of be able to create this in a more um, elastic scaling way so that you don't have to scale out your monolithic services. You can kind of put the different services where you want to run them, and you can scale them out independently. So what we've been doing so far is adopting technologies that are open and, and partners that have open technologies, and we've been co-developing with those partners. Um, in um, San Diego, a few months ago, we announced an alpha of something called Project Shipped. It's uh, shipped.cisco.com if you want to try it out. And it's meant to be sort of a complete end-to-end -end flow of a uh, software development lifecycle where you kind of connect into your existing um, project management tools you can develop the way you like to develop on your laptop with a tool like Vagrant that you usually use today anyway. We connect in with Docker Compose and with GitHub uh, repositories. Um, we sort of try to tackle that whole development, separating the development piece so you can kind of determine if you don't want to deploy it internally or externally to different clouds. Um, and with leveraging Terraforms, you can connect to pretty much any cloud that you want to connect to. And, and most of them we've already built into the framework that I'll announce in a few minutes. Um, we also have tackled orchestration of the application, so we provide a framework that's uh, Mesos and Marathon with Kubernetes now um, connected in with it with the Mesos framework. And we've also went after the, the data scientist concerns that we've been hearing from a lot of our customers, that they need a good service assurance and data platform underneath all of this infrastructure. And so making that also a containerized solution is something else we've been working very, um, very quickly on. And then, you know, lastly, we wanted to make sure that you could collaborate with other developers in your company and outside your company. And so we've initially integrated with Cisco Spark, which is our WebEx platform. I'm also excited to announce that we changed our microservices infrastructure work on, on GitHub now to Project Mantle. Um, it's a, kind of a hassle-free way to develop your, your microservices. It supports multiple frameworks. Uh, we have a very um, simple architecture that we're welcoming you know, anyone to contribute to and work with us on this. Um, it has cluster management. It's multi-cloud today. Uh, we support Amazon, Google, um, uh, DigitalOcean, and, and OpenStack clouds today. 
So go to Mantle.io if you want to learn more about that. Uh, obviously, being a networking company, we're really concerned about networking of containers as well. And so we're doing a lot of work in this space to kind of make networking a key first-class citizen in the container. And so we're working with partners like Calico and, and Mesosphere to kind of create a seamless, seamlessly integratable networking component within the container space so they can interoperate together. Uh, we're giving IP addresses to the containers and allowing those IP addresses to propagate. Uh, we provide namespaces for the container so you can actually name a container something that fits your application namespace very simply. And then lastly, but, but very importantly, with our, our application-centric infrastructure, we're creating policies and developing application-centric policies to allow a developer to create a business objective, not a network configuration, but a business objective that we then can deploy into the infrastructure and manage those policies and, and provide better performance for those applications. We also announced yesterday with, with Basho some interesting um, frameworks we're developing with them as well, so we wanted to kind of attack the, um, the data scale out components. Um, we picked Riot because mostly of the, the scaled out capability and, and the high performance that we needed in this environment. We also did a, a release this morning with Zoom data, where we're talking about um, kind of the big data and Spark components that are needed for the data platform. And then um, we also have been working closely in the Lambda architecture along with our partners to kind of look at how do we enhance and improve the um, data, real-time, and batch processing requirements that application developers have. And then, you know, I'd, li I'd like to bring Flo up on the stage now because we're doing some interesting work with Mesosphere that we announced this morning also, and I just wanted Flo to kind of talk quickly about what, um, what we're doing and, and why we're doing it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. So we're super excited to announce Mesosphere Infinity, which is our first vertical solution on top of DCOS. And it consists of a number of Mesos frameworks that we've actually developed together with uh, Cisco so, um, and uh, a number of other partners like Elodina and TypeSafe. So we have Kafka uh, as a Mesos framework, we have Spark as a Mesos framework, we have Cassandra as a Mesos framework, and Akka as a Mesos framework, and they all run on top of DCOS and you can manage them with DCOS. So um, you can find out more about it if you go to mesosphere.com slash infinity. Thanks, yeah. Ken. Thanks, Flo. It's been great working with you and your team. And um, there's a lot of interesting things that are, that are coming. And, and one of those is, a, is at a high level. I want to kind of talk a little bit about the IO, IOE, Internet of Everything, what we're doing with PLCs and drones. And that's what Infinity is going to be used for for us. Yeah. So, awesome. Thanks. Thank you so much. The, um, it's kind of interesting to think that you know, my day job is going to get to be playing with drones and flying drones around. But that's what I'm going to get to do for a little while. And, um, the fun thing here is that we're actually trying to solve some really interesting and really complex problems that, that our customers have, especially in the agricultural area. And so they're using drones to solve some of these problems. We're trying to you know, kind of enable fog nodes to run um, infinity on them and, and run sort of the, the edge, edge processing needed to do the analytics that needs to be pushed back up into the cloud. Uh, in this example that, that we've been developing towards uh, you'd have to have like humans present for most of this because of legal and compliance issues. And so um, it's not completely, um, this type of use case isn't completely um, on, you know, someone off on some, you know, control panel somewhere else. There have to be people on the farm actually doing this work. The, um, the approach is sort of looking at leveraging the power of your of clouds to enable the, the major processing of the data and understanding how to do the maps and the top topology and understanding where you need to, to change the, um, the watering or the, um, when it's time to harvest your crops. But the, the interesting thing is having that fog node with you know, an operating system running on it like DCOS and Infinity and the work that we're doing in the microservice infrastructure on Mantle to kind of get that to all be an edge, edge node that then talks back to the centralized node. I was gonna do a demo, but I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna skip the demo and go to, um, it's in the slide deck, so it's a fun demo we did with NASA and drones, and so kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at doing with drones. Um, but just to kind of wrap up, uh, we're really excited about what we're doing. We're happy to be part of this community and want to kind of invite you guys to join us in this journey. We're having a lot of fun developing and co-developing to deliver real-like solutions that can solve business problems, not just working on things that are, you know, technology for technology's sake, but really trying to focus on solving those business problems. 
uh, we're continuing to look at new technology. Part of the, the ship process and the ship design is that there's always going to be something next coming, something new coming. And so we want to be able to adopt any new technologies that come around. And our end goal is to really deliver the platform for the Internet of Everything. And so we welcome you to join us on the journey. And thank you again for your time.